On the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women went to the tomb, taking spices which they had prepared. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. continue now with our call to worship. The tomb was sealed. Jesus' fate was sealed. The women came anyway, bringing spices to anoint him. The stone was rolled away. The one we were looking for is stronger than the grave. 
come and see. Christ is risen. He is risen pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. And as you find your seats, just a special word of welcome. We are so glad to have you all joining in for worship here this morning. Whether you're in the sanctuary or joining in on the live stream, it is our privilege to play host for this Easter celebration, and we are enriched by your presence here this morning. If we have not had the chance to meet yet, my name's Nate Preisinger. I serve as one of the pastors here at Bethany. It's my privilege to serve alongside Pastor Gary Sandberg, Deacon Deborah Alba, and our Director of Pastoral Care, Janet Mortensen. Please note that entire pastoral team wants to support you in your journey of faith. And so feel free to contact us through the website. Our emails are in the back of the bulletin. Or um, feel free to talk to us after worship. But more than anything else, welcome to this Easter celebration. Thank you for taking time on Sunday morning to be here. Our service continues now with the reading of Scripture. We will read Psalm 118 responsively. I invite you to join me in the verses printed in bold type. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. Echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. 
I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Righteousness, I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The reading is from Acts chapter 10, starting with verse 34. Peter crosses the immense religious and social boundary that separates Jews from Gentiles in order to proclaim the good news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection so that God's forgiveness in Jesus' name would reach out to all people. The reading. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear. Not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of our sins through his name. The word of our Lord. I invite you to rise for the gospel acclamation. Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, O Christ. Well, we know what it is the, woman, the women were planning to do. They were planning to go to the tomb, as they had probably gone to other tombs in the past, and to take the spices that they had in order to anoint this dead body. Not something that was unusual in Jesus' day to be happening. So we know what it is the women were going to do. And along the way, you wonder if they just had this little tickle somewhere about remembering that Jesus had said something about dying and rising three days later. And they might have thought, you know, that happened with Lazarus when Jesus, though, showed up at the tomb. But Lazarus had only been sick. Jesus was crucified. Crucifixion is final. It is death in its ultimate form. And so the women went to the tomb knowing exactly what to expect. They would get there and they would put the spices that they had prepared on a dead body. They knew how this story would play out. The only question I have is on their way to the tomb, they started asking one another, who's going to roll the stone away for us? I thought that would have come up the day before when they were putting everything together, but clearly they had way too much on their mind to think through those details. They would just have to wait and see what happens when they arrived. And then when they got to the tomb, When they actually arrived there, they encountered something so completely different from anything that they expected that I can't even explain it to you, but I think Deacon Deborah can. And to do that, we're going to need some young people. So if you don't have a driver's license yet, come forward and join us for a couple of minutes here. Come on up so we can talk about what it is that the women found when they got to the tomb. Come on up, come on up, get close, get close, get close. Good morning. Good morning. Hi friends, good morning, happy Easter. Thank you, thank you. Get closer, you're so far away, get closer. Closer, closer, closer so I can see you, there we go. Good morning. I'm curious, how many of you have already looked for Easter eggs this morning? And how many of you might do that this afternoon? I have three Easter eggs here. I want to open them with you. I want you to help me guess what they are. I always like to shake them first. Is there something in there? Okay, what about that one? What do you think it is? Chocolate. Chocolate, you think? You think? It is chocolate, dark chocolate, my favorite. Okay, dark chocolate. Okay, ooh, look at this one. Whoa, (laughs) what do you think is in this one? Chocolate, you think more chocolate? Money. Money. Okay. I've got some people hoping for money here. When you see the golden egg, do you think it's more special? You think there's something really special? A piece of paper, okay, let's see. Okay, what do you think? Oh, I have stickers. No money, stickers. Okay, there's a bunny and there's a cross. So it wasn't quite as exciting as we thought it was going to be, was it? Okay, how about my last egg here? Do you think there's something in here? No. You can hear anything? It could be paper. Okay. All right. What do you think? What's in here? Nothing. Would you be sad if you opened an egg and there was nothing inside of it? No. You still get the egg. Okay. You still get the egg. But you were kind of expecting something, weren't you? But you know what? This egg is the best Easter egg because it shares a message about Easter 
that is more important than Easter eggs and bunnies and jelly beans. And it's about the empty tomb. This is what the women come to discover. When they come to the tomb, they are expecting to find Jesus and his dead body, but the tomb is empty. empty. Easter is all about the empty tomb. So if you get an Easter egg that's empty, I hope you remember that this is the best news there is, that the tomb is empty. And this is what Easter is all about. So you're going to help me out. During the rest of the sermon, there's going to be some times where I'm going to say something like, and you get the, and you're going to shout back at me, empty tomb, mm. all right? So we'll practice that once. I'll be talking, I'll be saying things, and all of a sudden I'll get to the point and I'll say, but you get the empty, empty tomb. tomb. Yes, just like that. Good Thank job. you. So be ready. I'm going to bring you in a couple of times to say that with me, okay? But you can head back to your seats and join Thank in. Thank you. I know as they're heading back to their seats, parents, you're thinking, oh, if they're not supposed to be disappointed about an empty egg, can I go get the chocolate out first? No, you still have to leave that in there for them. Well, we know what the women went to do at the tomb. Now we know what they encountered at the tomb. But I'm actually wondering why they went to the tomb in the first place. Not necessarily what action they expected to perform at the tomb, but what motivated them to go to the tomb in the first place. My guess is uh, it could be a jumble of things. I would think that some went to the tomb out of love. Just this immense and intense love that they had for Jesus that let them know that they were just compelled to want to be there with him on that morning. Some probably went just out of ritual. Well, it's just what you do. When somebody dies and is buried, the ritual is you go to the tomb and you put spices on the body. And so they were just going through the ritual. It's possible that they went simply out of obligation. They really didn't feel like they had a choice. This was something that others were telling them they just had to do. And as some of Jesus' closest disciples, friends, this was their obligation to simply go to the tomb. And one might have even gone out of peer pressure. It could have been two of them were saying, we're going to the tomb uh, as soon as the Sabbath dawn breaks and you're coming with us. Oh, I don't want to go. No, no, we really need you to go. I don't feel like going. We really need you to come with us. All right. And so peer pressure just takes you to the tomb. No matter what motivation they had, they still encountered. Kids, are you ready? Are you ready? Because I'm coming to you. I just want to make sure you are ready for it. Okay, no matter their motivation, they still encountered the empty tomb. Exactly. But what I wondered a little bit about then was, why are all of you here? What motivated you to be here on an Easter Sunday morning? I'm wondering if many of you are here just out of love out of the love that Jesus has for the world and the love that is poured into your hearts and it brings you into a place like today. Some of you might be here out of obligation. You know that when grandma visits, we go to church. That's just how it works since you're, uh, you're obligated to come here. And grandma's great because she pretends like you go to church every Sunday and you let her believe you go to church every Sunday and it all works out and it's fine. We're just delighted you're here in any case. And even if that's your motivation for being here, you still get the empty tomb. And some of you might be here out of ritual. It's a Sunday morning. You showed up because it's Sunday morning and you walked in and saw the flowers and went, oh cool, it's Easter. Because you were going to be here anyway, whether it was Easter or the seventh Sunday in Pentecost, because it's just what you do. But no matter why you're here, you get the empty tomb. And some of you might just be here out of peer pressure. 
that some said, you really have to go with us, or a friend just didn't want to go alone, and so they brought you along, and you just felt pressured to be here. No matter why you're here, you get the empty tomb. And sometimes you're here, and you've been brought for all of those things, and you know that that's not just church, but it happens at other times in our life as well. Anybody give a... Anybody ever receive an invitation to a party like a month or even six weeks ahead of time? And you look and you go, oh, that sounds like fun. And you RSVP and you say you'll be there. And then that day comes and then you're, you're working and you're getting things done and you look at your calendar and you go, oh, that party. And then you say to somebody else in your house, do we really have to go? I said, well, yeah, we have to go. We said we would go. I don't really feel like going anymore. We said we were going to go. We have to go. I don't. I don't want to go. Well, you should have thought about that six weeks ago when we said we would go. And so you just get yourself to the party. And then when you're there, you have this chance encounter with an old friend that you had no idea would be there. And it turns into this delightful encounter that you have. Or you're thinking for the last four years, you've always served the same the same kind of hors d'oeuvres for your final four party, and and now you show up at this party and there's this new dish on the table that someone has brought and you find out the recipe and you go, oh, now I have something else that I can make when I have guests. And it just feels like this encounter turns into so much joy. That's what God wants you to experience on Easter. It doesn't matter what motivated you to be here. God wants you to know the joy of the empty tomb. That's what draws us in. And so as a part of our time here, God simply invites you to find that encounter. But I I know what it's like when you're sitting here, especially if you weren't motivated necessarily by the love of Jesus. If you were motivated by the love of Jesus, you're good. We could do anything, and you would be just fine with it. Others of you are thinking when you're here, one, I really hope this is a traditional Lutheran worship service, and it only lasts an hour, and then we can all go home. And that's what's going through your mind. And that's okay, because if that's what you're thinking, you still get the empty tomb. And some of you are here thinking, oh, thank goodness the choir's here. I hope they sing a K-Love song, you know, that we're going to hear on the radio. But they're not going to. That's just not what they do. That's what Sounds of Praise did on Saturday night. But no matter that, you still get the empty tomb. Because even if you're here and you're just bored right now, Sorry if that's the case, I'll try harder. But, 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 but if not, something will happen along the way that God's going to want to encounter you. And you might feel at some point like, maybe I just came for nothing, which makes me wonder if that's what the women thought when they got to the tomb. They got to the tomb and they went, oh, we showed up for nothing. As it turns out, they showed up for everything everything. They showed up for everything because it's as if on that Friday night, God took Jesus' body and God packed into the tomb with Jesus all of the love that God could muster up for the world, all of the grace that God wanted extended to all of us, all of the mercy that God wanted people to know. And it feels like all of that just got stuffed into the tomb for that day. And then when dawn broke, broke on that Sabbath day. It's like the tomb burst forth. It's not just that the stone was rolled away, but all of the love that God had for the world burst forth from the tomb. All of the grace that God extends to the world burst forth from the tomb. All of the mercy that God wants people to feel burst forth from the tomb. And it has been spreading out through the world ever since. Because that's how Easter works. It can't be contained anywhere. It has to spread. It has to be shared. Ah, and that might be the final note. I know really why you're here when it comes right down to it. Not necessarily all of your motivation that led you here today, but I know why you're here. You're here because somebody In the same way that Peter was talking to the people, somebody chose to witness, to testify to the fact that the tomb was 
empty. Somebody chose to share that message. And I know you're probably saying, I don't think so, Pastor Gary. I heard you read the gospel. I was paying really close attention. And it said there that the women fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them and they said nothing to anyone. And if that were the case, we would not be here. But have you ever had the experience where something has happened to you or a friend? And what will happen is this, this, this event just really frightened you. And you'll say to somebody, oh my goodness, something happened. It was so scary, I, I can't even talk about it. And what's the first thing they'll say to you? What happened? Oh, and what's the first thing you'll do? Tell them exactly about it, exactly. So they fled from the tomb because terror and amazement had seized them. But when you are seized with terror and amazement, you cannot keep that inside. You have to share that message. It's like showing up at an empty tomb and realizing that love is burst forth. You show up to somebody and this story just bursts forth. And because somebody chose to testify Somebody chose to be a witness to the empty tomb. We are all here and we get to encounter that same empty tomb. And so for Easter, we might think we're here 2,000 years later because people won't stop talking about the empty tomb. 2,000 years from now, will people continue to gather? Will people continue to fill up worship spaces to encounter the empty tomb? Possibly. Possibly. All it's going to take is for somebody to witness to it. All it takes is for somebody to share the message of the empty tomb. And some of you, I get it. I get it. You might say, oh, I, I don't think that's me. I don't know if that's really kind of my style to be able to share that kind of message. But if I would stand up here and invite you into this little refrain, Christ is risen. Look at all you testifiers. You didn't know you had it in you, did you? That's all it takes to share the message that Christ is risen to share this message that the empty tomb, it is here for you, no matter what. That is God's gift to the world for you to encounter today. And then go share that message. Amen. You'll find our hymn of the day on page four in your worship bulletin. I invite you to stand as we sing.
Our worship continues with the opportunity to share in the words of the Apostles' Creed, as so many generations have done before us. I believe in the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church, where the church is persecuted, protect it, where the church is privileged, grant it humility, where the church is fractured, heal it, guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world. Merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations, free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife. Loving God, we pray for Bethany Lutheran Church and for your spirit in our midst. Feed us at your Easter table and fill us with your wisdom that we may serve and care for others. We offer prayers of healing for Deb, David, Dan, Terry, and Pauline. And we pray for comfort and the hope of the resurrection for the family and friends of Stan Wilson and Hilde Seeland, sister of Marga Klupel. Renew our trust in your promises that we live with joyful courage and compassion. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please take a moment to share a sign of peace with those around you. You'll notice that the next heading in your bulletin says Abundantly Bethany. On a normal Sunday morning, I would stand up here and tell you about the abundance of ministry opportunities here at Bethany in the days and weeks ahead. But this morning, I just want to say thank you for being here this morning. Uh, Pastor Gary kind of covered it in your sermon. It doesn't matter how you got here this morning. We're just glad that you're here and that you're joining in enriching this Easter celebration. Uh, also, I don't want to be a part of peer pressuring you to come to church or to get further involved. But I do want to invite you, if you're interested, to know about the ministries of Bethany. Those appear on the back cover of your bulletin, just some brief pieces of things that we do here in order to help people in their walk of faith. You'll see on that last page information about our uh, Bethany 365 devotional. Those are daily emails sent by members of the Bethany staff. Information about the Together for Good podcast that we put out every Tuesday. And then on the back cover, you'll see information about our regular worship times on Sunday mornings, educational opportunities every Wednesday night for all all ages, and then of course about our commitment to respond to the needs of the world through action and generosity. That's all part of what it is here that we're trying to do at Bethany as we continue forward the message of Christ and his resurrection. One other note, I had a note handed to me during the hymn of the day, which is always exciting for me. Uh, I Please announce that if you ordered 
Easter flowers that you may take them home with you at the conclusion of this worship service. So I have completed my task there with that extra note, and you know who you are if you have Easter flowers. Feel free to grab those at the end of worship this morning. Very good. We turn now to a time of offering, and this is something that we do each and every week as part of our worship service because we believe that our life of generosity and our life of faith are connected. And so we invite you this morning to make an offering. All the ways that you can give appear on the illustrator or also appear in your bulletin at the bottom of page five. Just to know if you have a paper offering with you this morning, you can leave that in one of the offering plates, which will be at the exits of the sanctuary as you leave this space this morning. Uh, One other invitation, though, on all this, we're really committed to this idea that generosity is part of our life of faith. And so if there's another organization that you support, another God-pleasing ministry that's a part of your life of giving, we encourage you at this time during worship to pull out your phone and make a donation to that organization that you support, thereby connecting your life of generosity with your life of faith that you practice today as part of worship. And so as we take time to worship God with our offering in these ways, our chancel choir shares with us the gift of music.
we gather together now for the ancient Christian practice of Holy Communion, please know that everyone who's gathered here in the sanctuary or joining in together on the live stream, we invite all of you to participate in Holy Communion this morning. We believe that this is not only our invitation, but more importantly, this is an invitation from Jesus Christ. If you will be spiritually nourished by this meal, please come and be fed at Christ's table this morning. Our entire communion liturgy appears in your bulletin beginning at the bottom of page six. I invite you to stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, it is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Christ took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you. It is shed for all people, for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As we remember then Christ's death and resurrection, let us pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Instructions about communion distribution at Bethany appear in your bulletin at the bottom of page 7. Please familiarize yourself with that paragraph so you know how the flow will work. But just a brief word, there will be silver trays, thanks Pastor Gary, at the front of each seating section. Um, and those silver trays contain prepackaged communion kits. Some of them are clearly marked gluten-free. Others, are, uh, the other ones are all alcohol-free. And so if you are, if those meet your dietary restrictions, please feel free to grab one of those as you make your way forward to the communion server to hear those important words, the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. And now hear this invitation to the table. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come to the banquet 
for all is now ready.
Our worship service continues at the top of page 9 in your bulletin. I invite you to stand. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. May the love of God fill up your hearts. May the joy of Christ fill up your souls. May the Spirit of God send you forth in blessing, but not for you alone, but that you might be a blessing to others because you are blessed. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We join in singing, now all the vault of heaven resounds.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.